All right, we're live, we're going. So uh, welcome to the new podcast, uh, Takeaway Only, presented by APOS, um, which is a new, uh, ambi- I guess it's an ambitious new platform that's providing an ecosystem for uh, hospi- hospitality businesses and also their customers um, to interact, uh, interact and engage on a whole new level. So um, I guess the reason why we wanted to bring this to um, not only the public, but also the business owners as well um, we get the chance to speak to a lot of different businesses on a day-to-day basis. Um, and the common theme amongst all of them right now is the, the great unknown. Um, and even though a lot of, of businesses have their, their small network of, um, of other trusted business people, um, what we're hearing a lot right now and what we're receiving is a lot of questions about how other businesses are managing, how they're going from a marketing front, from a business strategy perspective, um, and the list goes on. So. Uh, I guess the, the purpose behind this is just to um, provide a, a platform um, for the hospitality businesses of Perth to, um, to tune in and engage, um, and hopefully everyone's going to get something out of it. Um, so I guess today, um, for episode one, we've got Andrew Lamb from uh, King Hot Pot. Lamy, welcome. Hi, Stan. How you doing? Good, mate. Very good. So what's the latest? Well, um as you're aware, uh, everything has gone takeaway. Uh, there's no dine-in, and it's been uh, it's been rather difficult because uh, King Hot Pot uh, specialises in the dine-in customer experience, and so uh, we haven't been able to successfully find a way of going takeaway, and so we've been closed uh, since the new restrictions came into place uh, just over a month ago. Yeah, sure. Sure. Have you found that? Yeah. Um, no doubt it's been, been tough. So give us, a, give us a bit of the origins about, about King Hot Pot, mate. Yeah. Um, so King Hot Pot, we started uh, just about a year and a half ago uh, in Vic Park. And it, I, I suppose it all started with thinking about bringing Hot Pot to Perth, but opening it up to a variety of different palettes. Uh, I suppose the traditional hot pot is Chinese. And uh, now we know that in Asia, there's plenty of different soup flavors, different kind of uh, fusion, um, I suppose. You know, for instance, we have satay and uh, Tom Yum. You know, that's Malaysia, that's uh, um, Thai. And then we've got kimchi, which is Korean. And, you know, we, we wanted to bring something different to Perth that brings it all together. And so that's where the idea of King Hot Pot came from. Um, And I suppose the next step for us was thinking through the customer experience. Uh, uh, First and foremost, we thought through, of course, uh, in, in the customer experience, food always comes first, always, always comes first. So, uh, best value for money and top quality ing- ingredients that we can um, we can get and uh, provide that for everyone. Then we thought about the experience of dining in and, and what's that like. And I suppose two things came to mind. Uh, one of the frustrations of hot pot, I suppose, is that it's generally a shared meal, which can be fun. But if you want something that's different from you know, your friend or your, your family, it's, it's very difficult to negotiate that, especially when you're eating hot pot. And so we came up with this idea of individual hot pot rather than shared. Mm-hmm. And then further down that line of thinking, the customer experience, uh, something that's convenient, you know, rather than ordering large portions that people share, let's, let's limit the portion sizes to individual servings to fit these um, individual hot pots. And, uh, what more can we do with that? Well, I suppose the convenience of uh, just having the food brought to you. Uh, and so that's where the, the sushi train style came from, the conveyor belt, where the ingredients come across. Instead of looking through a menu, you don't know what you want. You don't know what it looks like. You've got it all passing right in front of you here. And you just, you just have a look at it. You don't have to talk to anyone. You don't have to... Um, I suppose, um, look through the menu and uh, just look at these pictures. You've got the food right in front of you. And so that's, that's where the, the whole idea, the concepts came from. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've been lucky enough to, to swing by before. And the, I think the first thing that struck me, I've obviously also got a, a bit of an Asian background as well from Malaysia, my mum is, and I found it mm. fascinating um, how you were able to bring all these different styles and experiences together into one. Um, so it was it was notable for me, but how, how how the customers how did the customers react to this sort of the new style um, that you brought to the market? Yeah, I suppose with with all new things, there's there's an element of risk involved in that. You know, there, it could be either really exciting and people really want to come try it out, or it's uh, whoa, that's a bit too out there for me and uh, I'm going to stick with what I know and you know I'm I'm a creature of habit and uh, you know when I go to my favorite restaurants I stick to the same dishes I know what the experience is like and so there there, there was a slight kind of um, anxiety involved with um, opening this up and the the reception has been great Um, you know uh, uh, I love Perth and Perth, uh, unfortunately, can be quite boring at times. And so <laughs> I think uh, it was quite exciting for some people to see something that's just so different, uh, yet kind of familiar at the same time. Yeah, You know, everyone's familiar with the conveyor belt. Everyone's sort of familiar with Asian soups and things like that. But the, the, the concepts, when you bring it all together, that's the new experience. Yeah. So it was, it was exciting for a little pe- um, for It was exciting for people at the start. But yet, yeah, it was also still familiar. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we've, we've had a lot of really good feedback. Uh, and uh, the, the, the main resounding feedback that we got from customers was the variety of soups that we offer. It's, it's not just your traditional Chinese hot pot. You know, we have the hot and spicy soup, but we, we meld together different kinds of cuisines that suits a variety of different palettes. And, you know, when you aim to please everyone, hopefully that's what you do, right? And um, that seems to be the feedback that we've gotten. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So what, uh, let's go back to sort of day one um, of King Hot Pot. And I know you, you've explained well there the, um, the experience you were looking to, to bring to the customers. And it, it was a melding of a lot of different aspects um, of what people had seen before. So obviously, Obviously, customers wouldn't have seen or experienced it, but how hard was it to, I guess, communicate that with your staff um, from day one as well, explaining the experience that you wanted them to um, to deliver to, to your customers? Mm, yeah, that's a that's a really interesting question, actually, because again, for for a lot of our staff who who have an Asian background, uh, coming from a variety of different Asian cultures, it was familiar yet it was also a whole new experience for them and so it was funny they they also had the same uh brand new exciting experience as our customers did except what we wanted to do with that was bring it to them before we brought it to the customers and so we had a soft opening um two nights where we invited friends and family and the uh, staff had their friends and family come along as well and the the staff got to sit down and try the meals before we properly opened up and um, there there were a couple little hurdles here and there in terms of explaining different things Uh, but overall it it was it was pretty straightforward Um, I think um, one one of the funniest uh, ones was I was trying to explain to one of our mainland Chinese staff um uh, the the idea and the concept and he's like oh yeah hot pot i know that that's great and then he sits down and then there's this satay soup in front of him <laughs> and he's thinking i know hot pot but what is what's this soup in this front of me not it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this yeah. is not it yeah and yeah. so we gave him that experience and, and it was it was funny to observe and be a part of that experience mm. and uh you know it, it's it's those little hurdles that are that are both interesting because we never foresaw uh, that, but it was also a fun one to overcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah brilliant, fantastic. So, how, how many staff have you got uh, at King Hot Pot, Andrew? So, uh, on the roster, uh, I have about fifteen in the front of house and about ten in the kitchen, yep. uh, but. Uh, on a typical weekday evening, we'll have about five at the front of house. 
yeah. and uh, maybe about five in the kitchen, four mm. or five in the kitchen. Yeah, and on the weekends when it's busy, you know, we'll have about eight out the front of uh, the house and about eight in the kitchen as well. Yeah, yeah, great. And where do you spend most of your time? Are you at, at the front with customers as well? Yeah, yeah. So for me, I, I just, I slot myself in wherever I see a need, not necessarily a problem, yeah. but a need. So for instance, you know, when we get really busy and things like that, uh, the staff are running around everywhere trying to um, serve different customers and bring the food out and do all these different things. And so an element that is missing on a busy night is the, the personal touch, that, that sort of customer uh, service, that experience, you know? And so uh, I find myself typically on a busy evening walking around and chatting to customers and asking them how their evening is, how their experience is. And if there's anything that we can do to accommodate a better experience. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas on a, on a more quiet night, you know, um, I might, uh, let leave that to the staff to do give them the opportunity to build those interpersonal relationships with the customers and enhance the customer experience and i'll park myself either in the bar or at the cash register at the front of the restaurant yeah so yeah right yeah beautiful so i guess you you've built a, a business around a, a dining experience um, a personal dining mm. experience and obviously yeah um, that's something with the situation now you're just not able to deliver. Um, can you mm. run us through sort of the, the thought patterns as a business owner when, when this did sort of look like it was going to be a reality, um, the closure and, you know, the, um, the change in, um, in, in, in legislation and what was, what we were able to do as a business. Mm. Yeah, that, that's a rather difficult one because, I still remember it was uh, middle of March. Um, March 22nd was our, our last day of trading. And that week, I had never seen the restaurant so empty. Um, uh, and this was before the government restrictions mm -hmm. of takeaway only. Yeah. Um, sorry, not even just King Hot Pot. It was... Albany Highway, Victoria Park. For sure. It it was a ghost town. Um, and that that for me was I suppose you'd you'd never expect something like that, you know? It's like an end of world scenario. And so I suppose in that week we worked out that we were probably gonna have to shut. And so reality hit us on the evening of March 22nd when uh, the federal government uh, said that uh, all restaurants, cafes, um, hospitality businesses will be restricted to takeaway only. Yeah. Yeah. It, it wasn't a surprise, um, but it was still difficult nonetheless. See, for us, we're, we're built around the customer's dine-in experience. And so we, we had two schools of thought um, that were, I suppose, in tension with, with one another. The first was thinking, okay, this is a business. We've got to keep it going as much as possible. You know, like we've got bills to pay, you've got to make ends meet, we've got staff to look after and all those things. So let's keep this open. Mm. Uh, let's, let's try to do takeaway as much as we possibly can. But then on the flip side of that, that actually goes completely against our whole philosophy, our whole, I suppose, purpose for this restaurant, which was the customer experience. See, food isn't just about food. It's also about the experience of enjoying it and being looked after. And, you know, like one of the highlights for me is I've got countless stories of customers coming in. Hi, how you doing? Uh, welcome to King Hot Pot. How's your day going? And the customer would say, "Yeah, it's been a rough week. It's been it's been not great or something like that." They won't go into personal details, but then I think to myself, "All right, that's the customer that I'm going to look after, especially tonight. I want them to walk out of here happier than how they came in." Yeah. And. Uh, more often than not, that was the case, but now we'd been robbed of that opportunity. Uh, 
And so it, it was a difficult decision to make to, to not do takeaway for the, for the reason that our philosophy is eating is more than just food. It's yeah. about the community. It's about the um, enjoying the company of others or enjoying the experience of it all. And not to mention, you know, uh, the quality of food that you can put out in delivery only goes so far and it will always fall short of the experience of dining in. And so we, we didn't want to put King Hot Pot through that. We didn't want to be delivering mediocre or subpar products to our customers, you know? Um, and so it was, it, was a, it was a really difficult decision to make to, um, to not do takeaway. Um, but I suppose that's also just being consistent with our philosophy of the dine-in experience as well. Yeah. Yep, sure. So, I mean, uh, there was an unwillingness to compromise on everything you held true as a business and as a, as a restaurant. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so, how, so then tell us, how's, um, how have your days changed now? I know family-owned business, I know how much time you put in personally to the, um, to the running of the restaurant and things. How's, how, what's life like at the moment? We've been closed for over a month now, but it's funny, um, my family, we, we still talk business. We still talk ideas. We still um, see each other regularly. Um, and when it comes to family time, um, that's just what it is. We come up with different ideas or different business adventures, what we can do, what we can think of and things like that. Yeah. But in terms of my, my day to day, it's, uh, it's definitely become a lot more menial. Um, it's funny, people talk about nine to five jobs being menial or the same routine over and over. Man, um, closing up was one of the worst things ever because this, this isn't work. This is, um, this is a passion. Yeah. It's, um, it's not just a nine to five, you know? And so there's only so much golf and tennis and socializing one can do before and it's only, you start it's, to miss work. <laughs> it's only so good at golf you're able to get as well, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, I haven't hit that ceiling yet, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Still a bit of room. Yeah, right. So, uh, a lot so of for, room, a lot of room. Yeah, yeah. So the, um, have the conversations changed at all? So, I mean, when I say conversations, I mean um, both internally, externally with other business owners. Um, have you seen a bit of a shift in uh, the way that people are going about um, their planning, their structure and this sort of stuff? Yeah. Everyone is scrambling. Everyone is scrambling. Everyone is, is trying to think of different ways of not just thriving, but surviving. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thankfully, we've got a great government that's um, been, been good in looking after uh, its people through, you know, job seeker and job keeper and things like that. Uh, you know, people aren't um, being really put out, you know, in, in the sense that um, we can still survive. Sure. But in terms of business models, this, this whole COVID-19 experience, this whole takeaway only restriction has, has forced all hospitality business owners to, to reshift the way that we think about business uh, our approach to, to customer service and business and, and things like that. And so the conversations that I've been having with uh, colleagues and fellow business owners, it's, it's, it's vastly different from um, any other conversation we, we've ever had before. Um, again, we've, we've never experienced anything like this. And so it's just new conversations. What, what can we do? What, um, what new things can we do? to entice customers and uh, what new things can we do to, uh, to move beyond surviving to thriving? Um, I haven't heard too many, uh, I suppose, innovative or new 
business models or structures to tackle the whole takeaway only restriction other than let's revamp social media. Let's, you know, if we can't be present face to face, let's be present in the cyberspace. Um, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, businesses uh, who have neglected uh, their social media following and uh, that whole cyberspace has had to rethink all of that. Um, and uh, I suppose the other thing that we've been thinking through is how do you engage people if they, they're not walking past your restaurant? How do you engage people if they're not coming in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so that brings us back to um, the old system, word of mouth, uh, through people that have already been here. Mm-hmm. Um, again, this is not a, a new thing, but a lot of a lot of business owners have been talking about engaging with the customer base that has already been a part of the restaurant before the whole takeaway only restriction. And so we're thinking, okay, social media. Well, the only people that follow us on social media, are the people who have dined with us or know us. And so there's, there's a loyalty base there. There's that customer base that, that has already been here. So engage with them. But what about customers who who have uh, been here but aren't engaged with us in social media? How, man, uh, a lot of a lot of us, myself included, especially, we're kicking ourselves thinking we had such an opportunity to build a loyal base of customers um, through some kind of loyalty program, but we didn't capitalize on that. Yeah. We were just too busy just trying to run the restaurant, run our businesses and not, not think forward in that space. Yeah, yeah, sure. And it's certainly, a, uh, it's certainly a common thing that we've heard amongst a lot of the businesses in Perth that we've spoken to. Um, even a lot that do have somewhat of a social media presence, uh, it, it certainly wasn't um, the cornerstone of their marketing efforts. Uh, mm. I think it's the joy of... It's the it's the best thing and worst thing about having great food and service is you can rely on the word of mouth. Um, so it's the double edged short is it's the double edged sword that, um, that we see with a lot of good quality businesses, hospitality businesses mm. here in Perth. Mm. Um, so it's a consistent message that we've got as well. Um, so I guess that brings us to what sort of, um, what initiatives have you, um, have you sort of settled on as a family in terms of the items you might bring on, um, or bring into the business perhaps to, to bridge that gap in the loyalty piece? Is there anything um, from that perspective, anything from a, a systems and processes perspective um, that you're looking at at, uh, um, at implementing if uh, once we do, um, once you are allowed to open your doors? Yeah. Um, it, it's still in the works at the moment, but what we're looking for is, I suppose, a a platform or a program uh, whereby we can build a customer base um, and have a loyalty program as well. Um, have you got a loyalty program? Because, so you, yeah. don't have a, you don't have a card program or anything like that at the moment at, at King Hot Pot? It's a... Oh, we, we do. It, it works as, I suppose, store credits. So it's not necessarily a loyalty program where people get rewarded for dining in, but more or less it's uh, we've, we've got a King hot pot card, um, which works similarly to any gift card where you load money on it. And like, I suppose there is some kind of incentive to load money on it. We give an extra 10% um, on top of what you, you load on starting at $200. Uh, yeah. you know, so you load 200, you get an extra $20. Uh, but that's not really a loyalty program. Sure. That's just a gift card, re- like a gift card program. Um, yeah. And so uh, in terms of a loyalty program, what, I, what I'm thinking of when, uh, when I think loyalty program is, uh, you, you know, when you go to like, you know, um, a boost or a bubble tea store and you get those little, cards where you can stamp each time you you spend a certain amount of money or uh, 
get uh, a drink or something like that. Um, we want something like that, just digital. Sure, sure. Um, yep. I mean, that gives yeah. you the opportunity, right? What we've observed with a lot of businesses that have invested in that, um, I guess is the opportunity for them to actually know exactly who these people or their customers are, um, mm. have an avenue to directly contact them and for them to directly contact you. Uh, exactly. Also, you know, I mean, data is king these days. Um, exactly. The, the value of having data, and I don't mean, you know, personal data and preferences and that sort of stuff. Something as simple as, hey, um, once a month, I know Nando's have a fantastic program. It's probably the, um, probably the envy of most loyalty programs is, is Nando's. Um, and, you know, you've got your, your monthly reward and then you know, everyone talks about their Perry points, that style of thing. Mm. Um, yeah, that's we, right. We hear a lot of restaurant owners say, hey, if we had this, we'd be laughing. This, this would be ideal, um, particularly now exactly. um, yeah, in, this, in this situation. Exactly. So, no, fascinating. Exactly. What else? Um, what about any dishes or anything like that? Have you guys, I know you guys are always cooking and always looking to, to come up with new recipes. You don't have to give us too much detail. So is there something we can all look forward to, to trying when, we're, uh, when you're back open? There's a couple of things you guys can look forward to trying. Um, uh, we have been for a while now in the process of opening up a second uh, restaurant, a second location. Uh, so that's King Hot Pot Morley. Yeah. Now, there may or may not be a variety of new soups that will be introduced uh, to the already um, eight different soup-based menu that we have when Morley opens up and that will be available at both locations. Uh, so th there are, there are four, four new soup flavors um, that'll, that'll be coming out. Uh, I, I don't want to give too much away. Uh, I want to give I too much the away. The excitement. Yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> You've got me excited enough already. So that's, that's all I need. <laughs> um, so you mentioned yeah, you're starting up Morley. When, when had you planned to have um, Morley open? before this, this situation? <laughs> Morley was, was looking at opening end of March, start of April. Um, we finished the fit out. It's ready to go. Yeah. Um, but obviously um, it's just sitting there now. Yeah. Uh, so even, even when the res restrictions relax, it'll be difficult to reopen. Um, not until the restrictions are completely removed because, you know, just like anything that you, um, any rite of passage or any, any exciting event, you, you want to make it grand, you want to make it big. And so we, we want to have a, a grand opening for, for the, for the Morley restaurant where we can fill the restaurant to capacity. Um, yeah. Yeah. Understand. Uh, yeah. Right. So, um, right. Yeah. That leads me to this question. So in terms of, um, I know a lot, of, a lot of restaurants have gone down to skeleton staff at the moment. I'm assuming for you, the, the minimum staff required to make sure that a, a basic, even a basic experience up to your level um, is, pretty, yeah. is, is pretty notable. How many, how many um, staff do you think would be required to, um, you know, if you if say tomorrow we're allowed to open again? Um, a lot of the mm. talks been around, uh, depending on square meterage and whatnot, but say a 33, say a one third capacity, let's just say, mm. um, how mm. many staff you, would you require there, um, a minimum, um, to make that, um, that experience feasible? Uh, in keeping up our standards, I don't want any less than four. Yeah. Um, four staff at the front of house, including the barman yeah. um, at any given time. Um, you know, uh, if, if the, the restaurant doesn't fill to a third capacity um, and there's, you know, staff finding themselves without much work to do, there's always things to do in the restaurant anyway. Um, yeah. There's always things to be uh, preparing and setting up for, for the next day and things like that. And so, um, Yes, it is about the customer experience and maintaining the high standards for that. But also it, a lot of it is looking after the staff and I think it would be unfair to employ any less than four out the front. Um, 
mm. including myself at the front too. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, now, favorite dish. What do you? Th- what's your personal favorite at King Hot Pot? Well, I know what people's favorite is, but my mine would have to be the satay soup. Uh, I I. It is so funny. You think that I would be sick of hot pot, but I can tell you right now. <laughs> if I'm not eating hot pot in front of me with the satay soup base, yeah, I've got a bowl of satay soup base <laughs> that I'm having out the back of the kitchen. Uh, you know, <laughs> shameless, so, plug. Yeah. shameless plug, mate. No, that's good. Yeah. It, no, it, no, no, no. I have right. had that one, so I can I can vouch for you there as well. What about the customer yes. favorite? Oh, look, um, a lot of people go for the tom yum. The tom yum is is really really popular. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you give us a bit of background on on that recipe? Um, not not actually what's in it, but um, yeah, yeah. Give us a bit of the origins of it. Yeah. So, the the mastermind behind all of the food at the restaurant is my mother. Um, she is an incredible lady who who never settles for mediocre. And even when she knows that her stuff is good, she still looks for ways of improving it. And you know, uh, our family we we love traveling. We, we absolutely love traveling and a large part of that is the food. Mm. And so uh, my, my mum's favorite soup dish would probably be Tom Yum. And so that's, that's, that's the one soup that she has poured her heart and soul out into. Uh, the amount of restaurants that we've been to where she sits there eating the, the Tom Yum soup and thinking, aren't you sick of it? We'll, we'll go traveling to Thailand and she'll have the Tom Yum, <laughs> you know? And so, uh, mum, mum's been very fortunate in that she has, has had a large experience of different types of Tom Yum and learned how to cook it from, uh, everything from, you know, a Thai grandmother to a Thai head chef. And she's taken all that knowledge, all that experience and put her own little spin in it. Um, so yeah. Um, w- w- one of the things that, you know, uh, my mum is huge on is, uh, not using MSG. Uh, mm-hmm. she, she has really bad reaction to MSG whenever she consumes it. And so she's carried that through to her cooking. You know, you, you walk into our kitchen and if you can find any MSG, <laughs> this is what my dad always says. We'll give you the the meal for free if you can find any MSG in our kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, don't bring it in there and put it in there yourself. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, brilliant, excellent, mate. Um, hey, so mm-hmm. through all this experience, it's obviously been really difficult, not only for you and your family, for the business, for your staff, um, other businesses around Perth and around Australia, around the world. Um, what have you learned most about one yourself and, and to the business um, through this time? I think, I think what I've learned isn't anything new, but something that's reinforced and entrenched, uh, I suppose, our philosophy of face-to-face um, dining experience. Um, all of that is, is based around relationships. You know, something I've noticed during this whole uh, COVID-19 experience is that more often than not, people have become a lot more compassionate towards one another. You know, we're, we're all going through this hardship together. Uh, because of the isolation and the maximum gathering of two persons in a public space, um, although that's been relaxed to 10 now, um, nonetheless, the, the isolation, the quarantining and the maximum gathering allowance has actually caused a lot of people to crave face-to-face relationships. Mm. 
it, it's interesting uh, because the way that technology and and the world is moving is everything is becoming internet based, cloud based, cyber cyber based, which is which is great and convenient. But what 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 it does is it takes away from the the real authentic experience of relating to people face to face. You know, uh, I, I find myself glued to my phone at times and uh, I, I found myself neglecting face-to-face -face friendships and relationships. I, I wouldn't mind just, you know, chatting to people over Messenger. But since this whole experience, uh, it's, it's, it's reinforced this idea that, hey, it is really important to, to be meeting with people and to be relating to others face-to-face. -face. And so... Uh, for us, what what that's what that's sort of done is, hey, when these restrictions lift, and people are allowed to dine in again, let's let's continue to focus and build on uh, that rapport, that that relationship, that experience, uh, the customer experience of being looked after and um, being served, and um, I suppose just enjoying each other's company, that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Brilliant. Lanny, thanks very much for your time, mate. Um, greatly appreciated. For anyone that hasn't been to King Hot Pot, when uh, when doors are open, make sure you get down there. Where are you? 889 Albany Highway, is that correct? That's the one. 889 Albany Highway, East Victoria Park. Yeah. Coming soon to Morley. <laughs> Brilliant. Awesome, mate. Um, for anyone else watching here, please share, please comment, please like. Um, you think anyone can get any value out of, uh, out of listening to uh, a couple of guys go at it, um, please uh, share. Um, if you'd like to be involved as well, uh, any Perth or Australian-based hospitality businesses, um, we'd love to, uh, love to speak and, and, and get an insight into your experience during a... Uh, during what is a, a difficult and um, very different time, unprecedented. So um, thanks again, Lemmy. Um, we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much, Stan. See ya. See ya.